Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of a decision tracer using ID3 algorithm. So basically in the initial stages of the lecture only I am saying, so basically in examinations, if this question is given like to solve a problem, so in most of the question papers you can find this kind of problem and commonly this is the question will be asked in most of the question papers also because this is the data set which the textbook is using and everywhere, wherever you watch any kind of lecture, most of the places they will be using this data set only. Okay, yes. But the only disadvantage with this problem is it is a time taking problem guys. It will take around 30 to 45 minutes or even one hour if you are too slow with calculations. Because you need to do multiple calculations and the formulas are also too complex that you cannot do without calci. Right? So that is the reason why I don't recommend doing this problem in examinations because our examination is of 2 hours and each question will be a maximum of 15 marks. Right. So if you waste 1 hour in this problem, you will be ending up with 1 hour and you need to write multiple LAQs in, the, in that 1 hour and VSAQs. So which is just a waste of time if you ask me. Right. Yes. So that is the reason why using ID3 I don't recommend guys. Okay. So there is one more algorithm in the next lecture we will be discussing that that you can use if you want. If you want to risk the time so basically it takes the time even that problem but when compared to id3 that is a bit easy okay yes i'll be going through both the methods with the same problem i think so yes with the same problem so don't worry guys okay so let us start with decision trees first of all then we'll be moving on to the problem the only reason why i'm explaining you the, about, about the situation with this problem is because even i left it in two subjects in examinations guys because i don't want to waste the time on these kind of problems because even if you do some small calculation mistake, you'll be ending up with the wrong answer. So it might not, you might not get full marks for it. Even you wasted your half an hour or one hour. So my option will be to leave it in choice or you can just remember the formulas and you can solve it up to some point and you can stop that. Okay. Yes. So it depends completely on your interest and you, if you are interested and if you want to solve it, you can solve it guys. Okay. It's just a suggestion. Okay. Sorry for if I'm wrong. Okay. Yes. So let us start. So decision trees. So a decision tree is a tree where each node represents a future or attribute so basically each of these things outlook temperature humidity windy so these are called as attributes or futures guys okay so futures about the event which we are checking so here the goal is do you want to play tennis if it is sunny and if it is hot if the humidity is high and if it is weak windy is weak so at that time you don't want to play like that based on these decisions you are deciding whether to play tennis or not so these are kind of things can be used can be solved using the decision trees guys okay so each link is called as a branch e represents a decision rule and each leaf represents the outcome so if you want the out the final diagram so it will look in this way guys so basically if based on temperature and humidity and wind i can say whether you are interested in going or not so basically assume that the outside temperature is sunny okay and you told the humidity is also high then there is a high chance that you are not going it you are not going that's it based on these inputs i'm saying okay yes so based on these inputs you'll be creating this tree guys okay so the tree might be looking easy the formulas might be easy but it's a time taking process that's the only thing that i'm saying okay yes but please go through the theory and formulas guys because in examination you could directly give explain a decision tree decision tree and id3 algorithm so then you need to just write the formulas right if you remember the formulas it will be take around 10 to 15 minutes right yes so it is an easy mark gaining but problem will take time okay yes so it is a supervised learning algorithm okay so the final outcome will always be yes or no so basically at the end the result should be yes or no so basically in some examinations he they wantedly gives you they wantedly will give you three parameters at the end so at that moment it becomes more complex guys okay because you need to check for three parameters here we will be checking for yes and no only there you need to check for yes and no and moderate so in that way it becomes more and more complex as the things will increase so even here we are having 14 if we are having 20 rows it becomes more complex in that way everything is directly proportional to complexity guys okay yes so the final outcome will always depend okay so to build the tree we will be using id3 algorithm in this problem okay yes so few formulas are there guys you should remember them basically okay yes so the first formula is entropy guys okay so entropy is nothing but the amount of uncertainty in the data okay so if a number of s's is equal to number of no's so basically i was saying right so we'll be counting these yeses and no's so if both the counts are equal then the entropy of that value will be one okay so if any one of them is a zero then the result will be zero any one is zero then entropy is zero what if both are not equal or one of them is not zero then you need to apply the formula that's it so entropy is equals to minus p by p plus n log to p by p plus n minus n 
by p plus n log 2 n p plus n. So basically once you took p in the numerator, once you took n in the numerator, in denominator p plus n, p plus n, p plus n, p plus n, log 2, log 2, minus, minus, that's it. The formulas are really simple to observe them and to solve them, but it's a time taking, okay? Yes, so you need to use log, log calci, okay? So in my calci, here you can have log and here you will be entering the base and on this side you will be entering the value like 20, okay? So 2.0 right here, so we will be getting the value. So in that way, so basically log base 2 is 1, right? Yes. So in that way, you will be solving it, guys. Okay, so we need to use Calci for this. It's mandatory, you can say, because you want the values in an accurate way. Okay, so once you got the entropy, the second formula is average information gain. So basically, it is nothing but I attribute. So for attributes, we'll be calculating. So it is nothing but summation of PI plus NI by P plus N. Entropy of A, okay. So guys, will be solving a problem, right? So don't worry about this formulas also. They'll be really easy for you, okay? So information gain. Gain is equals to entropy of S minus N i of attribute so basically this minus this you'll be getting the value okay yes so firstly let us go through the algorithm or problem guys so i think it will be better if we go through a problem as i'll be giving you just an overview of the problem because i'm not going to solve it step by step because it will take around 30 to 45 minutes the video will be too lengthy right yes so let me show you the question first so this is our question guys so this is the exact fit in our video right yes Okay, so this is the question which is having 14 entries in which 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 entries are no and the rest of the 8 entries I think. So 5 plus 7, right? So 5 plus 9, sorry. 5 plus 9. 9 entries are yes. Okay, yes. So we are having totally 9 yeses and 5 no's. Okay, so the first formula that we use is entropy guys. Okay, so entropy is equal to minus P by P plus N. So you'll be substituting P is nothing but yes, guys. N is nothing but no. P is nothing but positive means yes. N is nothing but no. Negative means no. Okay, yes. So you'll be substituting the value and you'll be getting an entropy value. So here we got a 0 .9, 0 0.940. So this entropy is of your whole table. Right? Yes. So once you got the entropy of the whole table, then you will be starting for each and every attribute guys or future you can say. So for outlook you will be solving, for temperature you will be solving, for humidity you will be solving, for wind you will be solving. So now let us start counting. So basically outlook, so we are starting with outlook guys. So guys I will be explaining only for outlook. After that I will be skipping these three explanations, I will be just showing you the values okay. Yes. So outlook, what are the different different futures we are having? We are having sunny, we are having overcast, we are having rainy, right? Yes. So once you got these three entries, you'll be writing them here. Okay. So then start counting the P's and S's. So how many positives are there in Sunny? So in Sunny, there are one, two. Okay. So we are having only two. So in this way, you will count them and you will fill this table. Okay. So once the table filling is done, so I think you can fill the table, right? So just to count them, right guys. How many S's are there with respect to Sunny? How many S's are with respect to Rainy? Like that. Count and fill the table. Okay. So once the filling is done, use the same entropy formula and find the entropy guys. I have just solved it step by step for this problem. Okay, you can check it and you can just check in calcs also. So basically whenever you see one of them is zero, directly write zero. If both are equal, directly write one. That's a trick you can say. Okay, yes. So once we got entropies of these values, okay. So then you will be calculating the information gain. So basically information gain is nothing but the sum of all the things guys. So basically here in, in outlook, we are having three, right? Sunny, rainy and overcast okay yes so basically you will be calculating for each and every one and you'll be summing them so basically uh, positive of a sunny plus a no, negative of sunny by p plus n where with entropy of that value entropy of this value so basically this value okay and similarly you will be calculating for all so uh, positive of rainy negative of rainy by positive plus negative similarly entropy of o is equal to r that's nothing but rainy Okay, so entropy of rainy, similarly overcast, okay? Yes. So remember that this parts, the numerator is for rainy and this P and end indicates the full table, guys. So we are having totally nine positives and five negatives, right? So remember this denominator is with respect to the full table, okay? So at the end, by solving it, you will be getting a value. And the final gain is nothing but entropy minus I. So entropy is nothing but the full table entropy, 0 0.940 minus this value. So you got for the first row, that is nothing but for this we got 0 0.2 something, 0 0.247, okay. Similarly, you solve for temperature, okay. So you wrote the table, you calculated the entropy, okay. Then you started with the formula, you substituted them, you got it. So once you got it, you subst subtracted them, you got the result. Similarly, for humidity, entropy, then substitute the values, then you'll be getting 0 0.788. So in simple words, if you ask me for a trick for solving this 
middle part so basically for this you can solve it easily right so there's a clear formula whereas for here it is really simple so you do 3 plus 4 into this by 9 plus 5 similarly 6 plus 1 into this by 9 plus 5 simple so subtract 0 0.940 the exact value minus this so basically you will be continuing this for all the rows guys okay so at the end you will be getting the result right yes so at the end you are done with all and you got all values right so in among those all which is having the highest that will be your root guys so 0 0.048 and this is a 0 0.152 this is 0 0.811 okay and this is 0 0.24 okay yes so this is the maximum one right yes so you will be selecting that as the root so basically we are having outlook as a root and outlook has a three operations three options right yes so the three options are nothing but it might be sunny it might be overcast it might be rain so i observed something with overcast so basically in overcast overcast it is always yes so here also it is yes 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 so indirectly i can say if it is overcast the temperature the result will be yes Okay, so now we are left out with the sunny and rainy. So sunny and rainy, we are having some combinations again. Okay, if you draw the, you should draw the separate tables. The separate tables will look like this, guys. For sunny and for rainy, with respect to sunny and with respect to rainy. So take the first table, okay, and calculate its entropy now. So basically here we are having one, two, three, three no's and two yeses. Okay, so for that three, two no's and sorry, two yeses and three no's, you will be calculating the entropy. Okay, so once you got the entropy, you calculate for each and every one's entropy again. So the same formulas you apply, I have just written the values guys now, okay. So for humidity you will be solving it, you will be getting this, for wind you will be getting this, okay. So for windy you will be getting this, for temperature you will be getting this, okay. So among them all, what is maximum? So humidity is maximum among them. So in humidity, again you will be checking, okay. So sunny with the humidity. So here 3 are highs and 2 are no's. So if you observe again directly from whenever it is high, it is a no. And whenever it is normal, it is yes. So directly from there you can say. So whenever humidity is normal, you will be saying yes. Whenever humidity is high, you will be saying no. So now you are done with this part, right. So now let us continue with rainy. So the same concept with rainy. Count them. So they are 3 and 2. So 3 yeses and 2 no's. Okay. So you will be solving it. You will be getting the entropy 0 0.971. Okay. So then continuing the same process for these three rows. 1, 2, 3. Rows are columns. 3 columns. Okay. So once you start doing them, you will be getting the gains. Okay. Yes. So once you got the gains, again you will be checking which is having the maximum value. So again here the windy is having the maximum value. Okay. So as windy is having the maximum value, you will be writing windy. Yes or no. So basically if you observe, the temperature column is never used right in the table. Yes. Because temperature, without temperature only, we can decide whether to go or not. So, it is a useless attribute, you can say, in the futures, okay? Yes. So, this is your final decision tree, guys, okay? Yes. So, I hope everyone got some basic idea on this, right? Yes. So, decision tree is for temperature attribute is not required to classify the data, okay? So, I hope everyone got a basic idea about this. So, based on your interest, if you want to solve it, practice it, guys, the problem, okay? Yes. So, the applications of decision tree are, it is used in decision making, customer relation management, fault, fault diagnosis in engineering and medical. So it could be used anywhere. So wherever you want to classify something based on some inputs. So basically assume that you are a sales employee and you want to check whether a person will buy your laptop or not if you are selling a laptop. So basically the first thing will be your age. So if his age is a kiddie age, like he's under 16 or under 15 so he, he he might not buy whereas if a guy is aged between 18 to 25 or 30 there's a high chance he'll buy a greater age of 25 they may not a greater age of 30 they may not buy so basically based on these things they can draw some graphs and based on the inputs they can decide whether the user will buy like whether to send him message requesting him to buy or sending an ad so based on these things there are multiple uses guys of decision trees okay Yes. So I hope everyone got a basic about basic idea about this ID3 algorithm, right? Guys, one thing, if you want to solve the problem, please make sure you are perfect with it. And, and I'm not forcing you not to solve the problem, okay? Please, I'm clear about it, guys, okay? Yes. And make sure that whenever you are, you make sure that you are going at least once through the theory part. Because in examination, he could ask for writing the theory. So make sure that you are perfect with the problem, with the formulas, okay? Yes. Okay, so let us go through the algorithm. So the algorithm is nothing but firstly you will be computing the entropy for the whole data set. Okay, so after that you will be con you will be calculating entropy gain and information gain for each and every attribute one after the other. Okay, so once you calculated them all, 
you will be picking the highest value and you will repeat it two and three steps until the decision tree is completely formed so that is a simple way of writing an algorithm for decision tree guys okay yes so i hope everyone got a clear idea about this concept so in the next lecture we'll be going through one more method to solve id to solve a decision tree guys so basically if you ask me there is a question in my examination and i have lots of time to write the solution and he did not mention which method to use so i suggest you to use this method guys that is nothing but classification and a regression tree so basically cart so if he is not mentioning if he is mentioning using id3 only you need to do using id3 only okay i'll be discussing about this method in the next lecture guys if you compare with the previous one this method is far easy okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture and discuss about this method okay thank you thanks for watching